Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is the day after the Super Bowl. More beer for us. Let's talk about it. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say uh, the under 56 and a half delivered, right? Big. Um, Pat Mahomes had less than a hundred passing yards deep in the third quarter. You saw the problems that Tampa Bay presented to Kansas City. Let's talk about why Kansas City lost. First, and I know there's a little bit of a cover-up, right? Everyone's saying the right things. No one wants to give excuses. <clears throat> but let's face it. Kansas City was injured. There's no question about that. The offensive line was in tatters. Pat Mahomes was under unprecedented pressure. He was under pressure the whole game. Right? Shaq Barrett was having a field day with the guy in front of him. On the other side was Jason Pierre-Paul, who also had a field day. You notice that on key plays, <clears throat> Pat was running for his life, then would throw the ball while he was falling down after he had run over to the sideline, right? He didn't have time to throw deep with any kind of accuracy. I thought the offensive line really was one of the biggest stories of this game. Understand, a key lineman got hurt late in their game against the Buffalo Bills. Kansas City simply didn't have the time to make the adjustment, to acclimate themselves to the new cast. You had another guy playing out of position. This was all new. They weren't ready for this athletic pass rush. Another reason was the speed. On the defensive line and at the linebacker position of uh, Tampa Bay. Kansas City tried to get Tyreek Hill outside. They tried to run some plays that worked in the playoffs against other teams. But team speed, right? And Todd Bowles, the defensive coordinator, deserves a lot of praise for this, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Team speed is really a hard thing to deal with. And Tampa Bay had it. Their guys were ready. So when Tyreek Hill does a little end around and he's trying to get a lane outside by the sideline to run down the field, guess what? Multiple Tampa guys were there. They had the edges covered. So not only were they rushing guys off the edges and getting to Mahomes with regularity, they had the edges covered for end arounds and Mahomes' quick dump offs. Right? Let's also call it as it is. I know Pat Mahomes is not going to say he was injured. Oh, man. Wasn't the limping obvious in the third and fourth quarters? Not only was the guy getting chased down, and he's a gamer, but he was limping while getting chased down. In other words, Pat Mahomes, who had some success running the football in the first half, wasn't able to run that much in the second half. Right? I'm guessing the first half, okay, he's just visited with the trainer. All right, he's taken pain-killing shots, whatever. Right? It's in the second half that you notice that he was completely gimpy. And understand, it's not just him moving and not being able to run at full speed. But it's also throwing with a bad toe. I don't care whether... That bad toe's on your front foot or your back foot. It throws off your throws. So Pat Mahomes wasn't 100%. The offensive line wasn't 100%. And Tampa Bay's speed was just too much. Now you add to that really game-killing penalties that Kansas City had, especially in the first half. And you had a problem because, of course, you're playing Tom Brady with a rushing attack. Both Fournette and Jones were averaging around five yards a carry. 
it's bad enough playing Tom Brady without a rushing attack. Here he has a rushing attack that he didn't have in New England for years. Right? Let's also just call it as it is. Tampa's talent, as odd as this sounds, <clears throat> was somehow underrated, even though at the wide receiver and tight end position, they had multiple future Hall of Famers. Right? Michael Evans is a likely Hall of Famer, folks. Look at the numbers. Look at the years of brilliance. Then, of course, you have Antonio Brown. You know, Antonio Brown, if he didn't have off-the-field issues, he would be an obvious first ballot Hall of Famer. Right? He's an obvious Hall of Famer. And, of course, by the way, Antonio Brown touchdown yesterday. Then you add in, of course, Rob Gronkowski. Two touchdowns. Rob Gronkowski is an obvious first ballot Hall of Famer. So understand what Tom Brady had to work in. By the way, I haven't even included Chris Godwin in all this, and he's a damn good wide receiver. So here you have Tom Brady with at least three guys to throw to who are elite who are future Hall of Famers in my eyes. Plus, he also had two guys in the backfield who, against this Kansas City defense, and KC's defense is not their strong suit, were going to average five yards a carry. And, of course, you had this game in Tom Brady's current home stadium. Right? So Tom, his crew... They're all sleeping in their own beds, right? They're all driving down familiar streets. The visitors are the press. They're home. Contrast that with Kansas City. And, of course, it goes without saying. The utter tragedy involving Andy Reid's son. That had to hit the Chiefs like an unwanted bomb. It's one thing to get into a car crash right before the Super Bowl. That's bad enough. Then you find out there was, according to reports, the smell of alcohol on his breath. Then, of course, you find out two kids, two kids, were involved in the car accident. Then, of course, you find out that one of the kids is dealing with life-threatening injuries. Now, folks, on a regular work day, when you don't have extra stress, that news is devastating. It's as stressful as it could be. It's terrible. Not only that, it involves the son of a team leader. Right? This is the head coach's son. It's devastating. Keep in mind, too, he didn't participate in the Super Bowl. So you had a new coach for his defensive unit. Right? This is the son who was involved in the accident. Let's just say the situation was less than optimal for the Kansas City Chiefs. Also, finally, I'll just leave with this. And don't get me wrong, it's more beer for us. It was a spectacular Super Bowl. People know I had leverage on Tampa Bay, right? You could have gotten them at 4-1 to one as late as the NFC Championship game on Futures to win it all, right? Think about that, right? I had leverage on Tampa. I did hedge it, put some on Kansas City, right? So I was hedged up. But this over-under number was ridiculous because, of course, Tampa had a top-five defense, according to Pro Football Outsiders, footballoutsiders.com, great site, totally recommended. Right, Tampa had a top defense, and, of course, Tampa's playing at home, and the 56-and-a-half number historically is a high number. Very few Super Bowls have gotten over 56 and a half points. The minute you see teams kicking field goals, 
then you know they're going to have a hard time getting to 56 and a half. Let's face it, too. Pat Mahomes was in a Super Bowl before this one. Guess what, folks? He was not optimal for three quarters in last year's Super Bowl against the 49ers. He wins that Super Bowl by getting multiple touchdowns in the fourth quarter, right? He enters the fourth quarter down by 10. Now, look at Pat Mahomes' history. You're going to find out that Pat Mahomes has had a few starts in the playoffs that have been slow. You might recall in just last year's playoffs, he faced the Houston Texans. You might recall him being down 24 nothing. Right? Well, here, understand, the pattern repeated itself. <clears throat> Pat Mahomes, the first half, wasn't great. Third quarter, wasn't great. Then guys started getting tired. Uh, Tampa decides to, you know, flood the secondary, allow underneath passing. That's how Pat Mahomes gets the 270 yards. Right? Pat Mahomes ends the first half with less than 100 passing yards. And so you got the under 56 and a half, which is a high total regardless, Super Bowl regular season. You got the under <clears throat> by 16 and a half points. Right? Think about it. It wasn't close. You were able to exhale watching the last four or five five minutes of the game because you understood a lot was going to have to happen. There would have to be a pick six or something like that to even threaten the 56 and a half number. I understand by the time the game went off that 56 and a half came down to 56. That's how high it was. The last move wasn't up. It was down. So, more beer for us. Let me congratulate everyone here on the play. Uh, Tampa, the underdog, dominated, delivered. Uh, Pat Mahomes was unable to throw deep. The speed, whether it's Shaq Barrett, whether it's JPP, whether it's the linebackers, it was just evident on the defensive side of the football for Tampa Bay from start to finish. Also, I thought it was interesting that Tampa's rushing attack, it's two-headed. So, you were able to go with Fournette for a stretch, take him out, Ronald Jones would come in, he'd be fresh. They could have run the ball a lot more if they wanted to. Also, you really do get a lot. When you have a veteran quarterback who understands how to milk the clock, right? You knew when Tom Brady had the ball, even when they were at the line of scrimmage, this was when Tampa had a lead, even when they were at the line of scrimmage, you knew Tom was going to allow at least 20 seconds to go off the play clock before snapping the football, right? You felt like you had veteran hands as the captain of the ship, right? Let me congratulate Tom Brady here. Um, you know, I'm a Montana guy, but I admit this helps Tom Brady's case a lot. Let me congratulate Mr. No Risk It, No Biscuit, Bruce Arians, simply outstanding. Let me also again congratulate a guy who I thought had as good a night as anyone. And that's Tampa Bay defensive coordinator, former head coach of the New York Jets, Todd Bowles. Outstanding. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. We'll talk more about baseball and uh, basketball now that football season is out. But this was a tremendous finish. I hope you're in the winner's circle. Thanks for stopping by. The Under Delivered. Big time. I look forward to your comments.